Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad within it. Welcome to Bethel Amy Church, the land of unlimited love. We praise God for this day of worship, and as we come into the sanctuary, we have gathered in his name. And on this day, Bethel Church Bloomfield, we celebrate our annual states rally with our steward board. We praise God for the blessing that he has given us, that we all come from states across our nation, and we thank God for our heritage. So we celebrate that today. Let us praise God from whom all blessings flow. the day that the Lord has made and we will worship God in spirit and in truth. Our praise team will bless us now with our opening selection. So let's get ourselves in the mode of worship and praise. Amen. Come on, praise team. Amen. How many of you know God is great, and he's greatly to be praised? Come on, let's bless the Lord. Oh 
Jesus' name. You may be seated in the presence of God. We're going to invite the Reverend Althea Walker, if she would come and lead us to the throne of God in prayer. And I don't know about you, but it has been a long week. Some have been sick in the body. Some have been fighting colds and allergies of the change of the weather. Some have been experiencing grief. But God is still able. You're here this morning to give him the glory and the praise. And so we've come to magnify the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Won't you pray for us and with us, Reverend Walker? What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Almighty and wise and awesome God, we come before you today just praising you and, and thanking you and lifting you up today. Yes, God, we are glad to be here in the land of the living. You didn't have to do it, but you did it anyhow. We thank you, God, and we praise you for all, all that you have done for us. Yes, some of us may have had a stressful week. Yes, some of us may have been dealing with all kinds of sickness. And yes, Lord, some of us may have even lost a loved one. And someone is lying in the hospital room right now, Lord, looking for you to just touch them with your healing hand. So we ask that you do what you do best, Lord God. You can do anything but fail. Hear our humble cry as we call on you here today. Bless those that are sick. Bless those that are struggling and dealing with mental health issues. Bless those, Lord God, that don't even know where the next meal is going to come from. Bless those, Lord, that are out there on the streets with no roof over their heads. Bless those that are incarcerated right now in the name of Jesus. Bless this sickness that's going all over this world. Bless the wars that are going on, not only all over this world, but locally here on our streets. God, we just thank you and praise you because you protect us no matter what it is that we're going through. God, we're on this road, and we don't know where we're headed, but you do. Our prayer is, God, that you will meet us there at the end of our journey. We ask that you will bless the word that's going to come from on high through your vessel today, Lord God. We thank you for the music that's going to lift our spirits. We thank you for those that are standing on our doors. We thank you for doors that are, those that are providing Zoom and social media so those that are sick and afflicted at home and can't get out. God, we ask that you will just touch us in a mighty way. We ask now, Lord God, that you will bless this annual conference that's coming up this week. We ask that you will be all over in the midst of everything. For we know, Lord God, again, you can do anything but fail us. Hear our humble cry. For it's in no other name but the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. will do a new thing in you. God will do a new thing in you. Whatever
you ask for whatever you pray for nothing shall be denied saith the Lord amen the Reverend Judy Simpson will come now and prepare our scripture for us amen yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. <laughs> My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we have to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and in found, and is found. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the glory.
also to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. What a wonderful blessing to have celebrated life for 98 years and to know that God has called her home. We continue to pray for the Simpson family. Amen. Today is our steward board annual day, and our chairpersons, Brother Pedro Douglas and Sister Paulette Green, are going to come. I believe Brother Pedro is going to speak and make our appeal this morning and give us any information we need to receive. Won't you receive them as they come in their own way today? Oh, you could do better than that. You may have a mask on, but your hands still move. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. First of all, give an honor to God. Sister Paulette and I are happy to be before you today in regards to the state's rally. Now, I know all of you received several phone calls from our pastor and from your team captains. We want to make sure that if you haven't already given your donation for the state's rally, which we did ask was at least $100, praise be to God, we ask that you do that. And what we're going to do today, all of those um, funds will be tallied. And when we meet again, amen, we will let you know what um, region raised the most. Well, of course, of course, of course, of course. But I, but, but I do have partiality to those mid-Atlantic states, amen. So we do as, we, we certainly know why this is done. And we want to just thank you ahead of time for your donations. And we love the fact that we can work together and be together as a family, knowing that all that we raise is all done for good, for the uplift of this kingdom. Thank God, and we thank you. Amen. Praise God to our chairpersons who have been working diligently and our stewards who have given you calls, and we thank God for everyone who is responding. Praise be to God. We are here at annual conference. You can look at the wall. The 171st session of the New England annual conference is right here in the land of unlimited love at Bethel Church in Bloomfield, Connecticut, hosted by the Harmonious Six, six churches that have gathered together to host the annual conference. And we are the host site. We are excited. The church is sparkling. It is looking wonderful. The choir has been rehearsed. We are ready for the arrival of our Episcopal leadership, uh, 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 the right Reverend Ju Julius Harrison McAllister and Mother Marla Joan McAllister. They're on the way, ready to come to Bloomfield, Connecticut to uh, run and to administrate the work of the New England Annual Conference. We are excited about new leadership. We are excited about new leadership in the First Episcopal District, and it does not yet appear who we shall be. Now, just a few housekeeping matters. Uh, all of our preachers, uh, uh, we need to let you know the bishop's roll call is on Thursday morning at 8 a.m., and we have been instructed that we must be in our attire, our clergy attire, black and white collars, please, on the opening day. He also is requiring all licentiates to please be in black and white and answer the role as well. A new addition to the conference at licentiates. All members must answer the role, even our superannuates. If you are present, he's asking you to answer the role on the opening day. We start on Tuesday. Amen. Tuesday night, Tuesday is going to be a virtual service. You don't have to come out to the house of the Lord. You could be at home and watch the services. The women in ministry have worship at 12 noon, and their preachers, the Reverend Barbara Simmons, Reverend Dr. Simmons, she's retired hiring from ministry, but this is her final sermon as a active pastor, and she is representing the women in ministry, and that is online on Tuesday. 
Then also on, uh, on Tuesday, the evangelists will have their service Tuesday evening. That's a live service, but it's online. And so we're inviting you to watch online again, and you will be able to see that worship experience. But bright and early Wednesday morning, we are right here for the Women's Missionary Society Annual Day. And that will begin at 8 a.m. The 12 noon preacher uh, will stand and preach a mighty, mighty word for the Lord. We are excited about the Reverend Barbara Groover from the historic Charles Street Church is going to be our preacher for the Women's Missionary Society Day. Uh, at 6 p.m., we're going over to the hotel at uh, the Windsor Marriott Hotel on Day Hill Road, and we are going to receive our bishop. Uh, we invite you to be a part of that, but we need you to register so we know who's going to be in the room. We have an Eventbrite, and we are inviting everyone to go on Eventbrite and register. Guess what, Bethel? That means you too. I know you're home. I know you are right here, but we need you to register on Eventbrite so we know what our our totals are. We can't provide food for you if you're not registered. We need to make sure we know how many people are going to be on site. And I know you're saying, but I'm a member of the church. I still need you to go to the Eventbrite and to register at the NEAC. It's a 171 NEAC, 171 171st session NEAC, New England Annual Conference. And you will see on the event bright you can register there uh, we have uh, an, a website and it is 171neac.org. And all of the information is there for annual conference. How you can register, all of the activities, the flip book for the worship services, everything you need to know, even directions to get to the hotel will be there. And so you can go on now, register. You'll see everything that's going on for annual conference. All of our worship services are right here at Bethel Church, except for the YPD, which is going to be at Allen Chapel on Saturday morning. We're closing on Saturday at 3.30 in the afternoon uh, rather than Sunday morning. So please come on out. Uh, just a note, our ordination service is on Friday. Amen. And we will all receive communion on the ordination day on Friday. And so things are a little bit different, but it's exciting to be able to serve this uh, and lead this annual conference uh, under the direction of our bishop and our presiding elder. And be a part of the Harmonious Six. If you're on a committee, you need to know what to do. You can see me at the close of the service, and uh, we have our hosting, our hospitality. Please see Reverend Judy B. Simpson. If you are in need of uh, hosting and working with media, you can see Sister Duchess. If the music, you already know, you're going to Brother Ty, and we are excited. Ushers, thank you very much. Stewardess, thank you very much. And nurses, thank Thank you very much for all that you are doing and continue to do. Uh, that's all I'm going to pause right now. And uh, we are going to invite you to give as we know that we can't do any of this without our stewardship. And so thank you for those that are tithing this morning and those that are giving in our steward board states rally. Amen. We praise God for all of the gifts, and the stewards have already committed to give $250 this morning. I sent mine uh, on the Givelify app, and in Givelify, you can write in the other section a comment. And I put Steward Board State Rally for Connecticut, Sister Paulette. And I made sure I put Connecticut in bold letters, New England, in bold letters in that uh, Givelify column. You can do the same thing, whatever state you're at. Put your uh, uh, region, designate, or you can see your captain today. Thank you for those that are giving in our tithes and our offering because God has been mighty good to us. We have uh, our tithing boxes around the sanctuary. There are two in the back, two in the front, and two in the balcony. There's also a box outside of the finance room door. 
The finance ministry will be here until 11 a.m. this morning. And so we praise God for the giving and the giver. But let's pause and bless this offering. Father, we thank you for all of these gifts. And though we do things and must change a little bit on how we receive, we know that every blessing comes from you. And so we sow back into the storehouse, believing by faith that the victory is ours. Bless every giver abundantly, for it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Praise be to God. Our praise team is going to bless us and take us higher now that we might be able to hear the word of God. Oh, 
you. Thank you, Lord. something to thank him for do you have something to thank the Lord for I don't know about you but I thank him I have so much to thank God for thank you Lord you've been so good to us hallelujah consecrate me now to thy service Lord by thy power of grace divine let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine, for it is in the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Thank you, praise team, for blessing us. Thank you, ushers, for serving. We draw your attention to the gospel according to Luke, the 15th chapter, beginning at the 25th verse. Thank you, Reverend Simpson, for preparing our scripture lesson. Please hear it again, coming from the New International Version of the Bible. Meanwhile, the other son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of his servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come home, he replied. Your father has killed the fatted calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, look, all these years, I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders, yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could be celebrated with my friends. But when this your son of yours, who has squandered away your property 
with prostitutes comes home. You killed the fatted calf for him. My son, the father said, you were always with me. And everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. For a few moments, let's focus on this subject. Looking in the lost and found. Looking in the lost and found. Have you ever lost something? You tried to find it? Looking in the lost and found. We find this morning that Jesus is teaching a parable. A matter of fact, this parable is three parables that are connected together. Jesus is teaching, and he begins by teaching an understanding about these lost sheep. I don't have time to preach that, but it's a wonderful understanding about uh, sheep. You know, ba ba black sheep. Have you any wool? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three bet. You know about being a black sheep and being the lost one that Jesus found. I almost preached that this morning. But, but, but then he moves to from a parable of sheep being lost and going out and finding the one lost sheep and not emphasizing on the ones that you have but focusing on the one that's lost. Then he moves to finding a lost coin. That, uh, that, that uh, we may have uh, uh, some coin that we lose, but when we find it, we rejoice. Finding the lost coin. But then Jesus preaches and teaches, tells this parable that is most familiar to us. It's probably the most familiar parable of all those in the entire Bible. The prodigal son. He tells them that there was a man who had these two sons. And the, the, the younger of the two goes to his father and asks his father while he's still alive for his portion of the inheritance. What audacity. Can you imagine to ask the father for a portion of his inheritance while he is still living? Do you know the impotence that he is reflecting on his father? Can you imagine what he as a child would say, is saying to his father? Uh, let, let me put it in these words for you. Uh, would you think that you could go to your mother or father and tell them to give you what is your inheritance while breath is still in their body? Tell them, sell the house and give you your share. Tell them, uh, give you their car. Tell them, uh, give you the money out of their bank account. Tell you, uh, uh, tell them to give you uh, uh, all of the jewelry you want out of your mother's uh, cupboard. And you still alive? Walking? Breathing? This parable has significant uh, uh, power because uh, the younger son uh, was saying to his father, I wish you were dead. I'd rather you be dead than alive because I want what's yours to be mine. The younger son goes, uh, but... Not only does he go and ask his father, have the 
audacity to ask his father for his inheritance, his money, his property, his wealth, his treasures. What's so crazy is the father turns around and does it. Yeah, the father takes what's his and divides it into his two sons. While he's still alive, instead of the father going off, the father says, if that's what you want, I'm going to give it to you. The father looks at his two sons, and because the younger of the two ask for the money, the father gives it to him. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Can you imagine the son receiving the inheritance and receiving the money, receiving the car, receiving all of the wealth, the jewelry, everything, half of what his father owned became the sons and the son went off and uh, and lived large and went to the city and, and was doing what he wanted to do uh, laying with prostitutes having parties spending money uh, all over the city uh, he was bawling yeah he was shot call he, 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 he spent it where he wanted because beloved when something is not yours you do not value it and you will spend it without a thought but when you have to work for something you will hold on to it because you know you how hard it took for you to get it Spent all of his father's money and ended up dwelling with the pigs. It's in the text. He, he, he's sleeping with the pigs. He is eating the slop of the pigs. He is dwelling in the barn. He went from the Marriott to the barn. He, he, he went from the embassy suites to the barn. He went from the Westin to the barn. He went from the Four Seasons to the barn. He went from uh, the Hyatt to the barn. He went uh, uh, from the courtyard to the barn. Uh, a matter of fact, he went from the Section 8 motel, the Red Roof Inn, to the barn. Uh, he lost everything uh, and ended up eating with pigs uh, in the barn. Squandered all of the money. Uh, the people are gone. Uh, the women are gone. The, the, uh, everything, the fame, the fortune, the glitz, the lights, all that he had was gone. On, and he's dwelling with pigs. Now you got to understand something that where that for, it's not just that he's living with pigs, but pigs are an impure animal. And so, because pigs are not pure, he could not even be around the people who are pure. He now becomes an outcast to society. Because he's dwelling with pigs, he's not uh, permitted to enter into the temple for worship practices. He is now considered outcast of the community. Because he's dwelling with pigs, he is not able to be around those persons who consider themselves upright and upstanding. Because if you can't go to church and go into the temple and worship and make sacrifice, you are unpure. He is just like the woman who had an issue of blood. He is not pure and unable to enter in to the social 
whole scene of life. So now not only has he lost his wealth, he has lost his position and he's lost from the community. He is a homeless, vagabond beggar that's not permitted to even dwell, walk, or talk to anybody who is inside of the community. He's lost everything uh, because he was not smart. But he decides to go on home. Goes home, and when he comes home, the father sees his son, sees his son coming to him. The father recognizes his son from afar, and he says, kill the fatted calf and make haste, and let's have a celebration. Let the music play. My son is alive. Get the wine, and let's celebrate. My son was dead, but now he is alive. He has been dead all of his life, but now he has come to his senses and come to an understanding. He has come back home. Let's have the celebration. And he put the ring on him and put his robe on him and brought his son into the house who said, Father, I'm not worthy to come into the house. Let me be a servant unto you. But his father said, my son, come home. But there is another son. Our message today focuses not on the story we know, but on the story we don't tell. That in the house there are two sons, and there's another son watching all of this happen. The other son was the good son. He was the son that stayed with daddy his whole life. He was the son that worked in the fields and made the sacrifice. And he did what was acceptable and appropriate. He was the son that went to the temple, went to church, and did all of the right things. He was the son that said the recitations at Easter. He was that son. He was the son that was the apple of his father's eye. He was that son. Uh, this parable is not about one son who has been lost but now is found, but rather it is about two sons who both are lost. You see, beloved, even if you are doing the right thing and in the right place, we can be doing the right thing, but for the wrong reason. This son, yes, he was a son that did not commit a lot of moral sin, but his heart was not right with God. This son wanted to be lifted up and wanted others to suffer who he felt were wrong in the eyesight of God. We need to see this morning that this brother refusing to celebrate the return of his younger brother is exactly what we are dealing with. It helps us to see the connection because the grumbling of the religious leaders this morning we are examining the section of this text of the older brother and uh, uh, be encouraged not to allow respectability to be a substitute for our relationship with God. Uh, it, it, we must look at this and see uh, that we uh, must be more than respectable Christians, uh, but rather we must have a relationship with God. Point number one, we must have a relationship. The older son did not have a good relationship with his father. We can see this because he did not join the celebration. He does not rejoice with his father at the return of his brother. 
When we learned that the party was for his brother, he got angry and he refused to go in. Even when his father came to get him, he got angry and he would not go in. He refused when his father begged him to celebrate his younger brother. It's no doubt that the older son was angry that his father even gave the younger son a share of the inheritance. The older son reveals that he was jealous when he says, look at the years I have served you. I never disobeyed you. I always follow your commands. And you didn't even give me a young goat to celebrate me with my friends. But when this son of yours came, not my brother, but when your son came, you decided to celebrate him. I don't even get a goat, but you gave him a fatted calf. He has devoured your property. He laid with prostitutes and you killed the calf for him. What about me? Lord have mercy. It's not about respectability. It's about relationship. When you have a close relationship with someone, you develop closeness and a bond. If your best friend calls you up and tells you good news, you're going to be happy for your best friend. But if they're not your friend, if they tell you some good news, and jealousy starts to rise in you because God blessed them with something, you've got to check your relationship. Because if I get jealous over your new dress, your new car, your new house, your new man, your new woman, uh, then it's a problem not with you, but it's a problem with me. I've got to check myself before I, you got to wreck myself. We, we got to check our relationship status because if we are jealous of each other or if we are angry with each other or if we can't celebrate the goodness of somebody else's blessing, uh, then the problem is us. I'm going to celebrate what God gave you because I know mine is on the way. I'm going to celebrate your healing because I know mine is on the way. I'm going to celebrate your new house because I know mine is on the way. I'm going to celebrate what God gave you because what God gave you is for you. It has your name on it. My name is on my blessing. Hallelujah. It's about relationship. We've got to rejoice in each other. From this and other parables, we see that they found value in something that was lost. In the lost sheep, they found value in that black sheep. In the, the coin, they found value in the lost coin. And now, in this lost son, we must find value in the lost one. We spend so much time pointing the finger and criticizing on the one that is out there in the street. The one that doesn't want to do right. The one that you know that's mama's child. You know that's daddy's boy. You know that. that you know oh, you, we have to celebrate when God touches them, brings them in, calls them, heals them, delivers them, and not be there 
there to judge because therefore the grace of God all of us are sinners but we are saved by his grace and if we all were real with ourselves, I know we're dressed up with church clothes on this morning but we were not always wearing these pretty church clothes and we all were not the people that we are right now some of us if we told the real story of who we are or who we were or where God brought us from some of us would not be even able to cross the door of the church some of us shouldn't even be in the church but by the grace of God he picks us up in our sin and washes us and cleans us up and gives us a relationship that is not about the sin that we committed but it's about the grace and the mercy of a loving God that saved us picked us up shook us off and gave us a new lease on life and now we are here to tell the story I was dead, but now I live. I was sick, but now I'm healed. I was out, but now I'm in. And I've come to give God the praise. It's about relationship. We shouldn't be grumbling with the Father. Because he saved our sinful brother. We shouldn't be grumbling with the father. Because he touched our sister. We shouldn't be grumbling with the father. Because he blessed somebody that wasn't uh, with us all the time. We ought to rejoice and be glad. Because God is still in the blessing business. I, I got to finish. I got to finish. It's... It's about relationship. It's about relationship. Point number two is respectability is not relationship. Respectability is not relationship. See, if the older son did not have a relationship with the father, what did he have? He had respectability. What's that, pastor? He sought respectability and ended up making it a substitution for a true healthy relationship with the father he thought that pretending to do what's right or even doing what's right or being respectable i go to church on sunday because it's the respectable Thing to do. I wear my suit and tie because it's the respectable thing to do. I'd wear my heels or my hat. My head is covered because it's the respectable thing to do. I put on stockings because it is the respectable thing to do. I wear a robe because it's the respectable thing to do. I have a Thompson chain Bible because it's the respectable thing to do. I don't eat uh, meat on Friday because it's the respectable thing to do. I uh, make sure that I do the right things at the right time because it's the respectable thing to do. But if we do all of those things and we do not have a relationship with God, then shame on us. It's right and good for us to be here, but if we're not here to hear a word from the Lord, then shame on us. If we are not here to have an encounter with a God that moves in the midst of our 
more darkness uh, than shame on us. Uh, when you think of where God has brought you from uh, and you can't come into his house uh, with a glad heart on a Sunday morning uh, to give God some praise, uh, then shame on us. Uh, it's not about being respectable. Uh, you can have a white stewardess uniform on, uh, but your heart be as dark and filled with sin. Uh, but we've got to have uh, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Uh, we must be uh, saved uh, and sanctified uh, with the power of the anointing uh, moving in us. Uh, that our relationship uh, is not about respectability uh, because sometimes uh, you got to roll up those holy hands uh, and you've got to roll up those sleeves uh, and get dirty uh, to help somebody uh, who is in need. You got to pick some folk up. We've got to do some things. You got to go by the school. We can't stay up in this church all the time. We've got to leave here. And when we leave here, we must be committed to do something in this world. But that starts with a relationship. The older son was in the right location, but he was never doing the right thing because he was trying to deal with all the rights. You know the rights. Don't you know Mr. and Mrs. Wright? The right church? The right car? The right school? The right job? The right club? The right sorority? The right fraternity? the right clothes, the right suit, the right tie, the right friends. You know Mr. and Mrs. Wright. Uh, we've got to have the right. You got the right stuff, baby. The, the, the rights, you know the rights. Uh, but the reality is the rights without relationship are the wrong. Because it's all about relationship. The father said to his son, our son, your brother, was dead. He was living his whole life in death. His focus was wrong. His vision was wrong. His purpose was wrong. You were in the right place, doing the right thing for the wrong reason. But let's celebrate your brother because he was dead, but now he's alive. Jesus is asking you this morning, are you in relationship or are you in respectability? Are you trying to fulfill all the rights? Because even Bethel Church could be the right. But if we're not doing God's will, have we helped somebody this week? Were we a blessing to the body of Christ this week? Did we say good morning to our brothers and sisters when we walked into the church? Did you say God bless you and mean it? For real. Did we look at somebody and say, you look good this morning and mean it for real? Did you say, girl, you sang that solo today and mean it? 
for real. Have we given to the poor? Have we been a blessing to a mother who is in need? Did we call up a senior and let them know we miss you? Or are we just the rights? God is calling us to go after the lost. We have been commissioned to do it. Why? Because he changed us. And if he could do it for me, he can do it for you. And so that's it. Respectability or relationship? Is it about being right? Or is it about serving God? Sometimes, I'm going to say this and I'm really going to be done. And if you're spiritual, you'll understand what I'm saying. Sometimes you've got to let people do wrong so that they can get right. We get so judgmental trying to tell somebody you're doing it wrong. And you cut off the anointing. You cut off the chance to minister. You cut off the chance to be a blessing or even to teach them how to do it right by stifling their spirit and telling them they're wrong. But if you let it go and say, you know what? Have you ever considered it this way? And if you ask it with the right spirit, <laughs> if you, the right spirit, you could ask anything. And I guarantee you, people will receive it. Instead of saying to that young lady, your dress is too tight. Too short. Don't be mad because you can't wear it that way anymore. Pull her aside and say, "You, sweetheart, you look beautiful. You look beautiful. But you know, some of these mothers may not receive you. So if you just loosen it just a little bit, it might be better for you. And if you want me to shop with you, I'll go with you. I'll help you out. Because they did the same thing to me. And I don't want to lose you. And I don't want it to be about what you have on. So, sweetheart, I'm here for you. And if they say something to you, you look at me. Because I got you. They'll receive it. Instead of saying, brother, you ought not be coming up in here smelling like liquor and weed. You got to say, my brother, come take a walk with me. Now, brother, I was where you are. And I know it's legal, and I know we're in Connecticut, and people do what they do. But, brother, some of the saints are not going to receive you, and you're doing a good work in here. So, brother, what we need you to do, could you not do that the night before you come to church or the morning you come to church? Brother, it's all right. I know, because I was where you are. It's no shame. But brother, we're going to walk together. Can I pray with you? 
Can I pray with you and ask God to strengthen you in this journey? And brother, if you need a brother, call me. Here's my number. Because I know what you're going through. Preacher! I know they're getting on your nerves. But preacher, you can't be drunk in the house of the Lord. Preacher, I know you got a collar on, you're wearing a robe, and you're trying to preach God's word. But that spirit, people can tell. So brother pastor, sister pastor. Sister minister, brother minister, if they get to you that bad, call me. We can go for a walk. We can go for a ride. We can talk it out. We can go for dinner. We can go for lunch. I'll be the listening ear, but don't let that crutch kill your ministry. I'll support you. And I don't care what they say about you. I'm your friend. Do you know how you approach it? Makes all of the difference. From the pastor to the minister to the pew to the street. It's about relationship and so if there's somebody in the house today we stand to our feet who needs that relationship with God I know this is a different kind of word you're going to say ooh what was pastor on today Jesus because some of us need to hear it a different way we need to understand that we all have fallen short of the glory of God. And we all need Jesus. So if your relationship, you need that relationship, you've never accepted Jesus Christ, I invite you at home or in the church, repeat these words, Lord Jesus, come into my heart right now. I am in the lost and found. Please find me. Find me, Jesus, and make me whole again. I'm tired of being lost, but I need you, Lord. Use me for your glory that someone else might be found through you. Because God, it's not about me. And if that was you, please put your name in the chat or let us know at the close of service, I'm out of the lost and found. Secondly, you might need a church home. Because this world, you are going astray and you're lost. Come to Bethel and become found. We invite you to join the church. If that's you, put your name in the chat. Join the church. Walk down and join the church. Or see us at the close of service and join the church. Lost and found. Lastly, somebody might be in need of prayer. You're lost because you need some focus spiritually. At the close of this worship, one of these preachers will bring you to the altar. We'll pray with you because we all have been lost, but now we're found. In the church, we have a box. 
where we put Bibles, earrings, scarves, gloves, hats, glasses, anything that you lose or leave behind. We store it for a while and hope that you come and find it. Guess what? Jesus has found you in that box of things that somebody left behind. We got thrown in there. But when you say, find me, Lord, he picks you up out of that box, dusts you off, and makes you new again. I'm glad for the lost and found. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. your brother was lost but now he's found and now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost rest and rule and abide with you now henceforth and forevermore and all God's people together sang Amen 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 A great Sunday. We'll see you at conference. Come on, church. Come on, praise team. Let's take us on home.
what the Lord has done for me. He gave me the victory. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Say yeah. Yes, I'm a believer. Say yes, yeah. Yes, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Yes, I'm a believer. I'm truly a believer. Yes, I'm a believer. I love you, Lord. 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 